Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to draw velocity diagram and the acceleration diagram easily, the easy method. Also, most of you all have already learned. However, I'm going to go from the basics. What should you know before drawing those things? So here I have given a question. So before doing that, if you are new to this channel, just subscribe it for watching daily videos. Also, if you like to solve any other problems regarding mechanical engineering subjects, I have given the link in the description so you can always use that. So let's go to the question. So before doing that, just copy that image so it would be useful when you are studying again. So here in the link mechanism shown in this figure, the crank OA of length 100 millimeter rotates about the fixed pivot O. As you can see here, there's a pivot called named A, named O, and there's a crank which is rotating about that O axis. So the piston B is restricted to slide in vertical guides along direction by by as shown. So you can see here that it's can only move in this vertical direction. So these are the main things they have given. So after that, the connecting rod AB has a length of 200 millimeter for the configuration shown. The crank has an angular velocity omega of 10 radian per second and an angular acceleration alpha of 20 radian per second scale. So I have marked already marked here. As you can see, this crank is having the omega as well as alpha which is angular acceleration they have given that values too so the first question is to find the velocity of the piston but i'm going to move to the next letter part which is to draw velocity diagram as well as the acceleration diagram the thing is velocity diagram is not much difficult compared to acceleration diagram for drawing the acceleration diagram there are some key techniques if you know that you can easily figure it out so if you already knew this concept please try it in your own after that watch the rest of the video so you can compare your answer with mine so let's go to the answer without any further delays so here for drawing the velocity diagram the actual purpose is we need to find the velocity of piston a b Let's say we need to find the velocity of this B. As you can all see here, if the, uh, first of all, we need to know what's going to happen over here. Here, the, the crank is going to rotate in this side, which means it's having a omega as well as alpha in the clockwise direction. If it moves like here, it's going to move or rotate. Actually, we don't know what's going to happen in this. So what anything going to happen over here, but we can tell that that B is going to move either upward or downward. As the movement is restricted, we can directly tell it's going to go this side or this side. Also, we can tell that A will be gone in the circular path. Why is that? The reason is here we have given that OA is a crank. So we can directly tell the radii between the O and A is fixed. So it can't move away. So it's going to have a circular path with the axis of O. So the, here the interesting part is you can easily draw the velocity diagram. For that, you need to know what are the main elements in this. So over here, first of all, before drawing the velocity diagram, you need to know some, some notations. So when we are marking the A's absolute velocity, which means the velocity of A relative to A, we are having a notation of simple O and simple A. So this notation means the velocity of A relative to O, as I have already mentioned that O is a fixed point, so we can directly consider as a earth. So when we are going to draw the velocity diagram, we need to know this O is a we are going to relate, relate that earth to this O and relate this A point in this simple A. So these are the terms we are going to use. This means 
the velocity of a relative to o. So the next point is we can directly tell what's the velocity of this b. So if you are figuring out what's the absolute velocity of b, which means the velocity of b relative to a, we can have a notation of o simple b. So as o is a fixed point I have already mentioned, so we can directly use the same point over here o relate the b's velocity relative to o. So after that we can directly tell another more thing too. If I find the velocity of the b relative to a, what would be that? We can directly tell it would be equals to a b. Why is that? The b's velocity relative to a. So these are the notation you need to know before drawing the velocity diagram. So the, our main part is we need to find what's the velocity of OB, the B's velocity using velocity diagram. For that, we need to draw a velocity diagram for this configuration. However, for drawing a configuration, a velocity diagram, you need to take a part where you don't know what's the velocity or you don't know what's the motion of this part would be. So if I consider like this, I don't know. Actually, I know what's the uh, movement of this A point. It's going to rotate over this part. And if I consider this B, but it's going to move on this side. So I don't need to draw the velocity diagram. I can't draw for that only. So I'm going to draw for these three parts. The A I'm going to draw mainly, I'm going to draw for this AB. So what's going to happen on the A? This is the velocity of OA. And then the P point is going to have in this direction OB either upward or downwards. And the AB, actually I don't know, but I have some simple techniques to show over to you. So here I have already marked these three things. So the next part is we need to mark the directions. So the, uh, the main thing over here is when you are going to draw a velocity diagram, you should know the direction. So otherwise you can't draw the velocity. You can't complete the velocity diagram. You need to know what's the directions going to be for these three. So the main part is if you have any questions, you need to know what are the directions of this. So the first part is, can you guess what the velocity of this A? So I think I have missed one part. The angle would be, this is 90. So guys, okay, this would be 90. As you can always take this, if this is 45, you can directly tell this is going to be 45. If this is 45, you can tell this is 45. So you can tell this O A is having a 45 degree. We are going to draw a velocity diagram when this angle is 45. So please remember that if you don't have a note, please take it down. So here I'm going to find the velocity of O A at that instant. So when I'm considering that, I can tell directly as the A is having a rotational motion over here, it's going to have the velocity in this direction. As we can, we already learned about that. If an object is having an omega angular velocity, we can directly mark it like this. So there would be this 45 degree and this would be the velocity. So what's the velocity value? You can always find that because we know the value of omega and we knew the value of OA, 100 millimeter. By substituting R omega, why am I substituting this is, actually I know to find the velocity of any point which is having a circular motion, which is equals to R omega. So we can directly tell, as I have already find the direction, after that we need to find what's the magnitude of that. So R would be 0 0.1 and the omega would be 10. So if I multiply this, I'm getting 1 meter per second. So the next part is I need to find the direction of OB as I have already mentioned. If you're going to draw the velocity diagram, you need to know three directions, the velocity, the directions of three velocities. So the main part is I already mentioned, we need to know the directions. But the thing is, you can know it's not a problem if you marked it like this or this, which means they are in the vertical direction. So it's enough to know what's the direction of this. Either it's in this upwards or downwards. So you can mark it like this. It's enough to have the option. 
but you can't tell it can move on these or four directions but you can mark it like this you need to know what's the actual direction of one thing as well as the magnitude of one after that you need to know what's the direction of this in terms of which direction in vertical or horizontal or anything so likewise you need to know what's the direction of this a the velocity of b relative to a so the here the interesting part is it would be in this direction or this direction so this is the main part why is that so if i consider the point b's motion relative to a we can directly tell the length is not going to change the length is not going to change don't consider anything just consider this point a and consider that a is not moving like that because we are going to check the motion of b relative to a so if i point if i take the point over here what would be the movement be like it's going to be in this rotation side because I'm, i have already told when i'm considering the a as a relative point i'm going to mark it as a fixed point so what's going to happen over here is the radius can't be changed because it's a fixed rigid body so it's a connecting rod which has a length of 200 meter millimeter we can't directly change this rod so we can directly tell it with relative to a the b's velocity would be either in this direction or this direction according to the omega a b it might be changed so we can directly sh show that it's going to be in this, this direction if i mark it like this this is going to be 90 this is going to be 45 so sorry this is going to be 45 or in this direction 45 in this direction uh, 45 degrees from the horizontal plane so this is the part you need to know this is the main part you need to know if you draw this you can easily figure it the other parts too so i have marked all the forces so this is the main point you need to know this would be the little bit difficult part in this video because when we are considering a relative to b's velocity relative to a the a is the little length a b is not going to change if i consider the a as a constant point a fixed point we can directly tell it's going to have the rotational motion it can't have the radial direction velocity or anything because of it's going to be fixed r is fixed so we can directly tell r dot and r double dot is zero so from that i'm going to complete this so we can complete this easily the point is from o to a it's going to be in this direction which i if i mark over here it's going to be 45 degrees so let's mark over here so if i marked over like this i'm going to point the o point so let's say this is the o point if i marked over here it's going to be in this downward direction i have marked over here this is a and we can directly tell this is going to be 45. so after that i can directly tell the velocity i can mark the ob because i knew the point of o so we can directly tell ob is going to be in this upside or downside so actually we don't know that so i'm going to draw a line like this so b can be either in this side or this side but we don't know what's the value of that too and as well as the direction whether it's in the upside or downside let's consider this a b if i consider the point a to b it's going to be in this side or this side so i am going to mark it like this so for the from the horizontal 45 degrees and it can be in this side or this side if you complete this we can directly tell this should be coincide because they are having the same point common point b so if you complete this you will be getting the velocity diagram from that you can directly tell what's the velocity of a o b because it's like a triangle so from this triangle you can directly find as i can i'm going to mark the degrees 45 45 the OB would be, what's the value of OB? It's 45 and this would be 1 meter per second. If I consider this, this is going to be 1 and this is 90. So this could going to be root 2 ms minus 1. And you can find what's the direction of OB at that 45 degree instant. It's going to be in the downside because O to B, which means B's velocity relative O is in this direction press uh, point this one and just draw a line like this it's going to be in this downward direction you can directly tell ob is in the downside so we can directly tell what's the value of it 
and the next part is we need to find what's the value of a b we can directly tell it's going to be one and also we can directly tell from the a point if i consider the velocity of b relative to a it's going to move in this side so it's going to be in this side so this is the main point and i hope you have understood it clearly if you like to watch other videos please subscribe me the in the, the acceleration graph acceleration diagram i will post it in another video i have given the link in the description so you can always watch that thank you